Hello everybody. So I'm back today and I'm hoping to show you um, the rest of this painting that I started yesterday. Um, I've got everything out and ready. And um, just another update about my surgery on my hand, my right hand, is um, on Monday morning. Monday, I'm not sure exactly what time yet, but I'd covet your prayers if you wouldn't mind. So anyway, thanks so much. Um, my plan, uh, if you didn't see the first one, this is the video, uh, video, this is the photograph that I'm using. And what I was really excited about the photo, um, is these hard rock slabs and that are really, really firm and hard and this light leaf stuff that will move at a breath. So I really like that. And I like some of the rhythm that's happening in the photo and I would like to capture that in this painting. I have a picture that I um, took off the internet and it's a pastel, um, but I just like the colors in it. So I'm going to sort of use that as a color reference. And um, so this painting is gonna be mostly about color, okay? So the texture and values and things need to, um, be subordinate to the color. So I'm going to be playing up a whole bunch of color and making up a bunch of color. Um, so just to continue with what we started yesterday, I put in a light color for the bottom of the sky here. And I, um, since you were here, I lightened up this tree and simplified its shape somewhat. And other than that, I think I'm ready to go. Um, there is a great big dark up here, which is a big tree. And I'm gonna see if I can work some other colors that show up in there. And uh, I have this really interesting um, texture happening here. Um, if you can see that in here from the thickness of the paint, as I just layered things on, this is dry now. It's tacky, I would say. It's not totally dry, but I'd be able to lay paint on it without um, mixing up the color too much, which is what I wanted. So anyway, um, I think I probably should start in my focal area um, because I want to make sure that that looks good. And um, rather than working everywhere else and then finding out I have to put so much into my focal area that Oh, then I have to just, too much detail, and I don't want to go to detail. Um, I have a few tools that I'm going to put, use in this painting, I think, since it's about color. And these are some RNF pigment sticks that I have that I really love. They're, they're super buttery, super creamy. You can draw with them, and I quite like that. Um, so I'm going to be using a bit of them. And then I have some pan pastel out here that I might... I might figure out how to use as well. I'm, it is almost five after one, so I'm gonna to try to keep this to 20 minutes. I might have to do a third video. I'm not quite sure at this moment, but we'll see where it goes. So I wanna get in and do some work on, these, um, on this tree, but I wanna see this negative space here. I really like that dark negative space and I've lost it here. So I'm going to try to um, put it back in. So I have, this is paint left over from yesterday, yesterday's session. Some of this stuff's getting a little dry. And as I said before, if it's getting a little dry, just add some um, cold wax to it and that will, that will make it uh, malleable. So I just wanna get a nice dark shape in behind here that will maybe help um, to define where these leaves and stuff are going to go. And that's already more interesting now that I've got that negative. Um, there's a couple of other negative places. I don't have to put them where they are in the picture. Uh, I can just sort of put them in wherever I think might be appropriate. And I'm using a, a, a palette knife to put it on. There's no real particular reason why. I like it that it has an edge. I can put it on and I can scrape it off with the same tool. Um, so now we've got some wet dark happening in here. So I'm gonna remember that and try to be a bit careful about that. Um, I have some of this green stuff from this tree and maybe I'll put a little bit of that in. 
Some of these negative details, they might have to go in later, and that's no problem at all. I can do that in tomorrow after this dries up a bit more. I don't want a ton of paint here, however. So I'm looking at the shape. So I have, I have this kind of, I don't know, rectangly thing going on here. I'm not greatly happy with that. So I'm going to maybe pull in some more negative to make that a little more interesting of a shape. And you probably know by now that shape is my primary element that I like to use in painting. Um, shape and color probably are going to be my two dominant go-to uh, kind of things um, to happen. Um, I really want to feel some movement. Right now everything is pretty rigid. I like the rigidity of the ground because that's rigid, but I want to be able to feel like things can can flow and move. So I'm going to get my um, squeegee out and I'm just going to see if I can't place a movement negatively with the sky against this dark tree. So I have some of that sky color over here and I think maybe I don't want it a bit up here, but maybe if I can, you know, just kind of figure out some kind of movement. Now I've made four marks, they're all the same. So I'm going to remove this mark, make that smaller mark um, so that I can change it up just a little bit so it's more interesting. And when you start making tree holes, you want your tree holes to be darker than your, than your sky or else they're gonna pop forward. So I'm just mixing up a darker version of that blue sky here. And notice what happens when I darken that sky hole. It kind of sit, sits back a little bit better. Um, so I'm trying to get some movement kind of going this way. So maybe a little bit in here. That's something I can play with too. I like to put sky holes next to trunks because that's usually where you see them. And not the same on both sides, but, and then I can always scrape back through some of that blue too. So that kind of, I like the, to make the sky hole and then design inside the sky hole. So that adds a bit of movement. And I like how that's now sort of coming down and I have a scratched here, a suggestion of, um, of a trunk just using the red of the background. So I have a screwdriver here, which I think works really well to get a wider line. And maybe I'll just um, see what happens. Scrape this in here. That's a really stiff straight line. That was not good. So let's go fix that. Um, I'm trying, I should have been telling myself, okay, movement, movement, movement. So maybe we can get some, some lighter uh, of this green color to kind of just kind of feel like it's moving around a bit here. That's better. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't really care that it makes sense. I'm not looking for representation here. I'm looking for um, excitement and movement. So I've got some ultramarine blue here that I'm mixing up with I need more of that. Mixing up with that green color to try to make it darker and bluer. I think I need some more blue. So you don't always have to mix all of your paint with cold wax. You can just, you know, just have a squish of paint out here and add cold wax as you need it. Um, by the way, I want to tell you that when I um, was finished last week, I just scooped up all of my piles of cold wax paint and put them in the freezer. And uh, then they were perfectly fine once they defrosted. So that's a really cool thing that you can uh, use yourself. I just want to add a little bit of white in here so I can see what the heck color that is. That's quite a cool now. It's a darker cool. It's the same color as that except a darker value. So that should be able to live over here. And maybe provide some mystery 
going on over here. Anyway, I'll play around with that a little bit later. Um, but I think that looks, when I stand back from that, it looks way better than when I'm too close to it. So that's something to always remember that, you know, distance is your friend. You want your painting to read from across the room, but you also want, um, you want it to be interesting when people come up towards your painting to have a look at it. So, okay, so I think that's okay. I really love what's going on here. Um, it gives a suggestion of that firmness and that's the um, cold wax mixed with charcoal. And the charcoal is quite um, matte and velvety. So it looks really nice and different against the, the matte of the cold wax, which is a flat matte color if that makes sense if I pull it up to you maybe you can see the difference here between the black of the of the charcoal powder and the paint surface it's different texture yet again and if I was to use some pure paint on here it would be shiny so it would be yet a third a third thing so now I'm going to go and work on my focal point um, I'm going to use some of these um, RNF pigment sticks. When you get pigment sticks, they have a, I'll show you on this one, they have, a, they skin over. So if you just take a palette knife or a knife and, and uh, scrape off the sticky bits, the hard bits, then you get a really nice creamy thing. And you can also use these as paint. So if you were using this color and you wanted to, um, have it as paint you just add some cold wax to it and um, then you've got a nice paint color because this is just paint it's it's oil paint mixed with uh, with wax okay so um there's the this is a transparent this is alizarin orange it's a very transparent color i told you before i was going to show you the difference between transparent and opaque colors so i'm going to do just a little bit of a glaze with this orange so that you can see see what's happening can you see that that this is going on and it's toning but it's not covering okay because that's a very transparent color if i put it on with um a tool that was a bit softer I would probably be work a little bit better but you can see how that's toning those areas down okay um, I'm not sure I want to tone them down at the moment I can always scrape it back off again though um, or I can add more paint so it's always sort of cold wax is fun it's kind of a on again off again kind of thing um, it also the cold wax the pigment sticks kind of activate your surface as well so I have a color here, this is called olive green, and I'll see what's going on with that. So this is, this is not mixed with cold wax, this is just pure paint and just yummy and you can draw with this stuff. Um, and it's quite soft, so even over the wet place that I, that I just put it, um, it can go on top of that. So that's kind of fun. I have, um, this is, uh, cadmium green pale love this color and you can see that it kind of it's a different kind of movement because you're you're used to painting with these other tools and I just love the purple against the green that's why I've got these two colors out here and I don't see green in these leaves and I don't care it's that was just a subject to think about uh, just a reference so and I said I was going to have some kind of a stopper over here, so maybe I'll just put a little of this. I don't want it to be really evident, but just a bit present. So, and this is perfect for leaves. I mean, you can sort of see that that could be leafy, leaf-like. Um, I'm going to take my screwdriver again and maybe just give some structure to whatever this thing is that's hanging out here and I kind of like it to go up into the sky so maybe I'll put a little bit of that at the top here but you know this is a really blunt tool so you really don't know where it's gonna go which is kind of fun um, and then I have this cad yellow this is my brightest yellow and you can see I can draw with this or I can make dots with it I quite like that 
So where does it need to go? I don't want to do it everywhere, but I want to think about movement. So I've got it there and there. So if I have some of it here, then I, it's going to kind of move you around there, which is kind of fun. I have a warm white, which is called Brilliant Yellow Extra Pale. I have dug in these, these um, uh, tree trunks. Um, so when I, if I try to put this in here, it might work and it might not work, but, but I can draw with this a little bit. Again, trying to get something going on here. Well, that white sure, is, sure works. I like that. Maybe I'll put, that's where the black was. You can see that the black paint is wetter than my, than my stick here. So maybe what I can do instead is take some and apply it with a palette knife here. There. And then maybe a little bit lower down here. All right. Um, when you paint trunks, it's always a good idea to come on top of your trunk with other color in places so that it's not uh, so, uh, so, um, what word am I, lost my words here. So it's not, they're broken up. They feel like they're mixed up uh, in there. And I could put a cool side on this trunk and I'm choosing purple to do it with because purple and yellow play really pretty together. And see what, what happens here. Cold wax is is kind of like a like I said it's like a it's like a blunt stick actually <laughs> probably the best way to describe it um, and then let's see some darker dead kind of leaf color maybe hanging around the bottom of this kind of thing maybe probably there shouldn't be leaves happening down this low that would make sense so maybe there's some shadow in there um, let's see if I can just put some of that in there oh I like that and it's you know I, you just never know what what it's gonna look like it all depends on how you how you put it down and if the painting gods are with you that day. So that kind of grounds that tree a little bit, which I think works good. So I have all this movement going this way. It might be kind of nice to have a little bit of that movement going this way. I like that. Um, and I have this trunk of this tree that I said I didn't like, right? Let's take this one out and try it again. That's the other nice thing about cold wax is you can try it and then try it again. Um, so I don't have, I have an opaque red, which is this uh, cad red, but I don't think I'm gonna draw it. I think I'm gonna put it on, I think I'll make some dark red here. This is red that's got black and a bunch of other colors into it and it's just become a bit neutral. So what do I want? Do I want that? Maybe that needs to be a bit brighter. I'll put a little orange, cat orange in that. And maybe we'll turn this go over here. Oh, I like that, it's really subtle. I like that. Because now there's, this talks to all the other little red bits that are popping through in my painting, which is quite nice. All right, um, let's see, what else do I want to do? I would like, there. there's a dead tree here. I don't know if you probably can't see it. There's a dead tree here. So when you start carving in to um, cold wax, you sort of have one chance to do this and get it right. And um, yeah. So I've got the bottom of a brush here because I can't find my stick at the moment. Oh, here it is. Okay, so I have a skewer and it's got a pointy end and a dull end, which is a great tool. So let's see, let's let's bring that over. And this, this guy was sort of beside it here. 
Oh, I like that. Let's get the fine in now. And it really helps that you shake because these trees are um, wild things. And if you get little glumps like that, you can just pick them off. Okay, I think that's not, I don't want to overdo this. Um, I had a teacher who once said, don't make it your life's work. And I, I really like that statement, you know, the, the talking about the detail. But I love the way this worked because there's a dark green here and that's red coming through. Um, I'm not 100% sure why it went to yellow here, but that's great because there was yellow underneath that got dry before I put that purple in. So I like the way that the paint is changing as you're scraping through there. So, oh, I like that. That adds a nice bit of movement to this. Um, maybe some of this could be a counter movement going the other way. As it were, just kind of pointing you back to my focal point. So I talked once before about using pointers in your in your painting. Um, and so that's a good idea. Um, I really wanna play with color. So I have some, my favorite color, Provence Blue, which is a dark periwinkle color, which I just love. And I love how purely it goes on. And that's one thing I really liked about this painting is you can see these little hits of periwinkle around and in the background so that's quite nice this is a rather dark value though so I might need to um, come and get a lighter value of that and you, and it's paint right so you can spread it just like just like you can spread any kind of paint um, which is kind of fun you can draw through it kind of thing like that, which is kind of nice. I like that little spark of purple. And that purple is on a very neutral ground, which means it's really going to um, show up and play beautifully. So let's see if we can mix some of this with some white. I'll just take some of that paint off. I'll mix some cold wax with it. This is an opaque pigment, as opposed to the alizarin orange, which was a transparent pigment. It's a cool color, so I'm gonna use my titanium white to lighten it. I lighten my warm colors with a warm white and my cool colors with a cool white, which is, is um, titanium white. Try to get a little more of that white. Put it over there rather than mixing the whole thing in, just go bit by bit here. So that's quite nice and it's very similar to that color um, that's back here. I made this this um, blue violet with ultramarine, some cobalt violet, and some yellow to tone it down. So you can see how much fresher this color is than that, which is a bit toned down. So let's see what happens if we... I, I like that, you know, that for me, let's see what happens. That's the fun part about painting is being surprised by what might happen. Okay, so that looks good. Maybe put some up on there. These could be little flowers or who knows what. It's just stuff that's that's going up there. I like kind of like this quiet area that's happening there, except I think that perhaps it would be better if it if it had a little more, it kept it quiet, but had a little bit more happening in it. So let's see, what can we do? Cause right now it's sort of all of this gray color. <clears throat> so I think I can get some of these more neutral colors that I had before just to, you know, give, give something going on up here, which is, I like that orange, that dull orange against that dull gray here. I like the way that this um, back ledge is reading here. I that w I knew that was going to be a struggle to try to make that um, to make that read, but I'm I'm quite happy with the way that that turned out, and I like this um, tone on tone passage that's happening there. Okay, so uh, maybe one last thing I'll do is I'll just stick a piece of 
leaf on on here. I really like leaves that fly off into the air. <laughs> so there we go. Um, I do have some pan pastel that I thought I might play with um, just to decorate a little bit. So just throw some in here and just press it down with your spatula um, and uh, that will press it into the cold wax. Where else might I want some of this? It's quite a light value though. I'm not sure if I like that. If I don't like it, I just scrape it off and I'll put it with some of this purple. I love this combination of the this green and this purple here. Okay, that kind of quieted that down. I quite like that. Maybe some of that could live up here. And hmm, maybe some blue, since it's in the shadow up here, maybe. That's nice. That's a nice little pop of color there. The temptation always is, if it looks good there, let's put it everywhere, <clears throat> which is not a very good idea, actually. But that blue is brilliant on there, if you can see how brilliant that blue is, because it's 100% pigment, and there's nothing mixed with it. So, so I've got this. Where else can I put it? Maybe at the base of some of this stuff back here. Hmm. So it's always put it down, have a look, see if you like it. And if you don't, change it. I'm looking for places where there's hard edges. So I want to break up some of those hard edges. That's better. I like this blue kind of thing that's going on over here. Um, and maybe some of this actually could point us in the direction we want to go. And maybe some of that could come past that line. Yeah, except now I have this whole thing. Not good. So let's just take some of it out. And so that it's there, but it's not quite as obvious. I'll go through and decide how many of these little red bits I want to keep. Um, probably not many of them up here because it's too close to the edge. And just fill a little bit of that in. And I think I'd like some of this to come even a little further over here. Just to add a bit of difference there and maybe even some of it coming up here. So if I make my stroke go in the way that I want the eye to move, then hopefully that will, that will happen. So I think I'm pretty happy with that at this stage. Um, I might come back and play in the sky a little bit. There's some places. Um, one thing that happens when you work on the first layer and it's really, really wet paint um, is it'll sometimes pick up the other colors and then that makes it kind of gooky. So if you come back with fresher color when it's semi-dry like this, that fresher color can, can kind of really live on top of that drier stuff and I like that very much. I hadn't planned that but so you can see this is the same color as I used before but it's fresher paint um, so that it sticks out sticks out a bit more. Um, so I have some mud in here so I'm just going back to that fresh oh that's a different value. <clears throat> okay so I'm this is what I want, that's what I have. So I need to bump some of this up to that value. And it's good that they're laying beside each other on my palette because then I can make sure I mix them to the same value. Okay, we're running out of time here. There, there's the same value. So I can just pick some of that up and I uh, have didn't take the old paint off, so let's scrape the old paint off. You can see that there's stuff underneath there from what I did before and covered up. And I now have paint all over my table. <clears throat> so with the lighter paint, 
think it even needs to be lighter still. We can go over that. It's still lighter. The squeegee doesn't make a very great mixing tool, as you can tell. I'm trying to be fast now. Fast never helps. Okay, there we go. This is still a little bit darker value than I want there, but it might be okay. All right, so that's what I wanted to do. I'll just show it to you up close here. And I will put um, an, a copy of the photo of the finish at the end of the video. Anyway, I'm going to put all of these photos on my blog, which is on my website, SharonLynnWilliams.com, and the blog is um, a heading at the top of my website, so they will be there forever. They're also on YouTube. So anyway, thanks very much. I don't think I'm going to do any painting now before I have my surgery, so wish me well. Anyway, bye for now. Take care. God bless and stay safe. Bye-bye.